we are starting our three-day expedition from Coron to El Nido. So strap up your life vest because you're coming on the journey. And we are off. We've just had a briefing from the staff today. We've got three stops, one for lunch, one for snorkeling, and then the third is cliff jumping. So I'm buzzing for that. And oh, my boat just slowed down a bit. Then he fell into the sea. So yeah, three stops and about five hours of sailing, I think. So yeah. You, look, you looking forward to it? Yes. Yeah, buzzing? Yes. How much rum and cola are you going to drink? Um, a responsible amount. <laughs> Especially for a cliff jumping later. I know, yeah. They did say, so there's unlimited rum and cola on this trip, but he said, chill out until we do the cliff jumping, and he doesn't want any drug people doing the cliff jumping. So. I also like that he said that he had unlimited rum and coke before he said he had unlimited water. Yeah, I know. Which made me think, what are his priorities? But it's okay. <laughs> We're responsible adults, aren't we? We are indeed, yeah. Let's go. For lunch now, we got Chef Richard cooking up a storm. Run and roll! <laughs> He's got the two burners there. Nice little lunch pending. And it's dip time. Jumping in? Yeah, you have to come with me. No, you got to do it on your own. Jesus Christ. Fuck me, it's roasting. Today, a coral garden. It is cliff jumping time. Uh, it's eight minutes, is it? Just up there where they are now. Is it cold? Uh, you going for it? Yeah. Yeah, you can. So. Here he goes for his cliff jump. Go on, Joe! <laughs> from the middle of nowhere in the Philippines. Got it very, very bright this morning. But what a first day that was yesterday. After the cliff jumping, we come back and we had dinner, which was really nice. And the unlimited rum and coke was flowing indeed. There were some very, very drunk people. <laughs> very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go have a look at the accommodation that we're staying in. Everyone's currently getting ready for breakfast. Obviously you've got the sea there. The tide is out, so yeah, you've got to walk quite far out to go for a dip. And these are all the huts we've been staying in. Apologies for the mess. But here is our place. Come into here and just a mattress with a net around it that is literally i don't even know what more to show you to be honest there's no light in here there's no socket to charge your phone or anything so yeah very limited but the amazing thing is you wake up from there and then straight out onto this view so yeah not too bad that's all ready for the second day. How was your night last night? I had such a good time. Yeah. It's so fun. Have you got a sore head? Not a sore head, but you know, like when you've drunk so much and you wake up and you still feel a little bit like drunk, like a bit woozy. Yeah. I would say Beth was probably the second drunkest person no, on the island. There's last no night. way second. I would, I would maybe say, second. say fifth. There was fifth, a, lot, yeah. a lot of drunk people, but. Like my uncle Steve, when he gets drunk, he uh, he tends to make a speech, and apparently that's what I did last night. Yeah. That's what you relayed to me. Beth did make a speech, telling everyone how happy she was. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad thing, is it? You could, no, have, you but... could have told everyone you hated everyone. No, so. but that's the that's the. I'm so drunk, right? I need to tell everybody yeah, that exactly. I love them. Basically, <laughs> I met them yesterday. You were doing uh, a Steve and a Tim as well. Yeah, my brother does too. That is too. that is yeah. a, a trait of theirs. Yeah. But I would say the drunkest person on the island was a French guy <laughs> named Thomas and he was absolutely battered at dinner and he literally couldn't even stand up and they were all, everyone was trying to put him into bed but he was having absolutely none of it. There's too much fun going on outside, like it was hard, like we had this little like 
disco. Disco, dance floor, set up, like in the sand, like under the moonlight, and then he'd go to bed and then he'd come back out and we were like, oh no. And then he'd dance some rum and then like, have to be put back to bed, it was dope. Yeah, so I wonder how he's gonna be feeling this morning. Day two, first stop, turtle searching. Fingers crossed. another deserted island in the middle of Coron and El Nido. The apartments, or I say apartments, that's, I'm definitely making it sound a lot better than what it is. The huts are the same as yesterday, so I'm not going to show you them. You can see they go all the way down there, but what I am going to show you is the washing and bathroom facilities. So let's have a look at them. This is the sink that we're working with. The tap is very, very powerful. As you can see, look at that. that is what you need. And over here we have the showers, and you walk in. It's a bit hard your feet, honestly. I was standing here having a shower last night. I was like, Oof. it does hurt a bit, but here she is. Give it a turn on. Lovely. What more do you need? And over here we have the toilet. In here, nice little basin on the floor. No toilet roll and a bucket with a little scoop to flush it down. So yeah, those are the facilities, not the not the five-star places that you might expect on a deserted island, but we're in nature, we're getting immersed in nature. I tell you what, it's actually been really nice to wake up naturally by the sun and just be straight on the beach. But also, I don't know if you can tell, but it is so windy. Last night was ridiculously windy. I was laying there and I didn't sleep too well to be fair because I was just getting woken up by the wind and I actually had a dream that it was so windy that the waves were like coming and crashing over our heads and we all had to like escape the island. So yeah, it was definitely playing on my mind. But it is the last day of the expedition today. So more stops on the way, probably some snorkeling I'm guessing and then we'll finish in El Nido. How did you sleep last night? No. No. You had a funny dream as well, didn't you? Yeah, I dreamt that the whole island flooded and we had to be emergency evacuated on, on the two kayaks that the boat has. Um, and I just don't feel very well, so. Yeah, another thing that's happened is we got a new chef yesterday on the boat, like yesterday, I think before lunch, and everyone's woke up this morning, or I'll say everyone, I'd say like I'd say over 50 percent. Yeah, over busy. half of the people that are on the boat have woke up and said they were sick last night, or just yeah, feel really sick. So yeah, not sure what's happened there, but I mean it can only be the food. I'm guessing no one even really like was boozing last night. So and what better way yeah. to cure a sickness than to get on a whole day boat? <laughs> <laughs> First stop today is Cobra Island, and that is because apparently that little island over there looks like their head. A uh, cobra, water's looking crystal clear blue. But it is so windy. Honestly, the journey here has been rocking loads. Even now, I'm struggling to stand up on here. But I'm gonna fall in. Oh. 
is it, safely back on dry land. Oh, what a three days. So I'm just chilling at El Nido Beach after getting back from the expedition yesterday and it is beautiful. Here are my final thoughts on the expedition. As a whole, I'd say it's a really, really cool experience. We had such a good group doing it with us. Everyone was so nice and friendly and it just made the experience 10 times better, to be honest. The stops that we done, obviously seeing a turtle was amazing, but I would say outside of that, they weren't really any better than what you get on doing a general like day trip from either Coron or El Nido. So, maybe something to think about. The food was amazing, sleeping on the beach in the huts was also really amazing and it was really good to have no phone signal and just be off the grid for a few days. So we booked ours through a company called Tribe Buena and we paid 17,000 pesos each for that and I think they basically just booked too many people on the boat. The boat wasn't the biggest compared to some of the others that we see when we stopped at various places so what I would say is that just probably spend a little bit more money and get a bit of a more comfortable boat as the one that we done was I think one of the cheapest ones so definitely worth spending just a little bit more money and getting a better boat which will be a bit more comfortable. So if you want to see how we get on in the rest of the Philippines and wherever else we go to after the Philippines then make sure you hit that subscribe button.